Hello and welcome back to Tyranny. Let's venture into the cave. Because apparently there's nothing else for us to do over here. I do not like that sound. Did you hear that binder? Sounds like a humming in the walls. No, I heard growing. Luminescent mushrooms dot the current floor emitting a disquieting glow without providing much in the way of illumination. This stone formation quietly hums a slowly modulating... You hear this too, right? Siren lightly presses her palm into the stone. It feels like he left it for me. A message. She tries to press an ear to the stone, succeeding only in knocking her headdress against it. He. He who. Cairn, obviously. You think this magic rock just made itself? A message. There's some meaning in the music, I think. She shakes her head. I don't understand it. But maybe there's more deeper in. Let's go. Siren pulls a crystal from the formation and slips it among her belongings. It slides free without effort. The shadows shift before you in hulking masses of darkness. As they step closer, the pale luminescence of the cave fungi highlights blunt, bony features. Lips curl back over yellow fangs and violet gums, and sinewy muscles tighten as the beast's clawed fingers spread open. Another human. The largest of the figures steps forward, revealing herself as a heavily muscled beast woman covered in rust cold fur. Her yellow gaze narrows intensely upon you, nostrils flaring to drink in your scent. <sighs> Does new human offer man flesh to heal Strider's pack? Pryingly leather clads offer more bone than meat. Meat short meals for beast woman. I am no mere human. Beast woman will obey. Human smells of northern beast woman's milk. She peers down at you. You'll try their here strength of long hands in human swords. Go through before Hill Strider changes mind. Thank you. What do we have here? Potion of elemental barrier. Maybe we should start eating and drinking what we have with us. There are people he here? Gross. Who would choose to live in this fetid hole? Outriders? Outsiders? Run! I got it. The Fate Binder. How did you. Uh, I mean, welcome. Fate Binder, good day to you. The young man greets you with a smile as distant shouts reverberate throughout the area, steadily growing in volume. As you may have observed, your presence comes as a bit of a surprise. It's an unexpected pleasure. I, I meet to receive an esteemed servant of the court. He bows stiffly, revealing a row of multi-shaped quills along his back. Uh, I'm Scribe Mel of the Vellum Citadel, um, formerly of, uh, I suppose I should say, I should say. Uh, you aren't here to... I mean, Kairos doesn't have another edict in store for us, does he? He taps a long quill against his thigh, its feather plume fluttering nervously in return. Uh, I figure if that was the case, I would be waist deep in lava as we speak. <laughs> The sage concludes with a half-hearted chuckle that tapers into terrified silence. What is this place? Uh, I struggle with the definition myself, truthfully. Uh, we call this place the Bastard's Wound, or just the Wound for short. It's a refuge of sorts, a haven for folks displaced by war and poor decision-making. Uh, everyone that, that's here discovered this place by chance, but remains by choice. The decor is unorthodox, to be sure, but it does come with the benefit of extreme seclusion. 
not not that we object to the crew's presence uh, or that of the aircons. We simply thought it best to unburden you all of the weight of governance. I I know you have better things to do than check up on us. We're we're fine, really. Everything is fine. You look past the scribe, taking note of the details in this cavernous area. Giant stone walls flung the space and ascend to an open sky, seemingly shorn apart from one another. Thunderous waterfalls cascade down, nearly winging the stone tiled islands that compri compri comprised the settlement. Though covered by damp moss and man made tents, the stone architecture here is unmistakably of the old walls. What's all the commotion about? Visitors are all are always cause for alarm. Moreover, you aren't just any outsider, you're a fate binder. Too many. It's as if Tunum just strolled into our homes. Your dispensation of justice could have profound ramifications for a little known and um, technically hidden settlement such as ours. Some of the refugees here don't know your intentions, and no, no doubt they have little to fear, right? You need only fear a fate painter if you've done something wrong, like viol violating their laws regarding the old walls. Uh, 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 of, of course, I can see why things might appear that way. He stammers, running his hands clumsily over the scrolls on his bandolier. He snatches one from its loop and taps at it nervously. If you look at this drawing of the area, we are, by the way, of several fathoms below the old walls. You see, rising up. So, who's to say if we're in the old walls or really just underground? I, I mean the other than Feybinder, of course. I merely mean to suggest that there's some potential ambiguity as to whether we've really done anything wrong. Let's examine the parchment. Sketched upon the crumpled parchment is a cross-section of what appears to be old walls running through the mountainous region of the Basotir. If this map is accurate, these old walls were almost entirely under the mountains. The upper reaches of these old walls are just a few stories above the valley floor. Judging from the map, the old wall slopes upward as it travels north, and slopes downward as it heads south. I am not here to condemn the settlement. Yet. Thank you, Fatebinder. I will merely say that this is an unusual place, and its legal standing somewhat unclear. We would never know only violate Carlos's law, is what I mean. <laughs> we appreciate your generosity, Fatebinder. I hope that you will come to appreciate the wound in time. No, no doubt you have many questions of us. I shall do my best to acquaint you with this uh, uh, outpost. I is there anything I can help you with? I have received a message from a sage L that directed me here. Know where I can find this person? Uh, sage L? That could only mean... Like, Sim contracted you? Contacted you? If I if I may, uh, in regards to what? I would like to speak to this sage in person. Uh, Master Rilaxim is linked amongst us. She vanished into the lower levels for some time ago. She wasn't herself. He frowns his brow, visibly distressed. Uh, life here is rather complicated, and the old walls bless us with the numerous mysteries. One of those is unending sleeplessness, an affliction that drove her mad. He lives with a long sigh, then smiles a forced grin. I have a question about the wound and its history. The analysis and creation of historical documents was one of my chief areas of focus at the Citadel, and I've had enough time to acquaint myself with the particulars of this place, so I, I, I suppose I'm the person to ask. What, what would you like to know? 
How did everyone get here? Th this place was discovered three years ago by braver and more adventurous souls than Master Exim and I. We are relative newcomers, going on about a year at this point. When Karen smashed Rostrom's Vorus's manor, his supporters fled into the cracked mountainside and discovered this place. At the time, life here with the Bane sounded better than life at war with the Archons. From there, the settlement grew in spurts. We are far off the beaten path, so visitors are rare, but the few we've gotten have often made this place home. Not every encounter with the outside has been positive. When some disfavored found us, things got ugly fast. But the bloodshed was limited and the survivors joined us in the end, if a bit reluctantly. What do you know about this place? Remarkable place, is it not? He stretches his arms apart, looking around for emphasis. We we've no idea how old this corner of the old walls happens to be, but the tunnel leading into it came into being a few years ago. Karen's fury was unleashed in the battle on the top side, and whatever powers he used split under the mountains and fractured the these old walls. He points upwards, past the crashing waterfalls and towards the exposed sky. The divided walls flare outwards, a giant moor stretched towards the firmament. Cracked the whole of them old walls in half, and now sunlight and water are here for the first time since... ever. Makes me wonder if there are other old walls like this that are hidden from view to those of us just walking the surface. How do you survive in this place? What do you eat? We get enough sunlight to cultivate crops on the upper levels. Cabbage, narshirt, radishes, mushrooms even. The biggest challenge here is drinking water. Despite appearances, he means for it while speaking, his tone energetic. It's a rather interesting phenomenon, actually. Something in the old world's environment leaches into the water and corrupts it, producing a most curious disease in the afflicted. There is no fever or chills, bleeding, vomited, or what have you, but you will waste away over time, as if one were starving. Tidecaster walk stuff devise a method to magically treat the water, rendering it safe to consume, and with creative properties for those already sick. This solution is a bit slow at making large amounts, but fortunately, Jaspos constructed some stone aquifers. Water poured into these aquifers will drain a few hours later and emerge purified. Between their contributions, we're able to make the wound a proper home. So, so long as the two keep their squabbling to a minimum. To the bay not threaten you. He nods, absentmindedly rubbing the dried ink between his fingers. Uh, yes, of course, but we have a system for that. You've met our greeting party in the caves, I take it. Incidentally, what happened to... <laughs> he shakes his head, dismissing the thought. It, it doesn't matter. The point is that we have a contingent of beastmen with us, and they've adapted exceedingly well to the old walls and show little fear of the abominations. They've been perfectly eager to dig their claws into any that come our way. It's surprising that even wars, by the way. But who am I to argue? At any rate, they keep the entry points to the wood clear and seem content to keep doing so. In fact, I dare say some of them have come to love hunting the bane. Or just have a death wish and that's why they volunteer for patrol day after day. Hmm. Let's speak of the other mothers. What do you do here? What, what don't I do? <laughs> Someone has to inventory the supplies, take census, ledger, trade. It's all pretty unexciting, I assure you. I happen to like playing steward. Balancing numbers is easy for me, and I have far more responsibilities than I ever did as a mere scribe at the Citadel. Aren't you a bit young for a sage? If I were a tenured sage, that may well be true, but I'm just apprentice. Many in the guild scribe for decades before attaining rank. As the school is no more, I suppose I'll never officially be counted among the sages. But I am making my contributions to knowledge in my own ways. 
My master thinks similarly, though I think the loss of the school means more to her. I had a few years to know the other sages. She had a few decades. Where is your master? Master Lexim is sadly not among us. She vanished into the lower levels some time ago. She wasn't herself. He follows his bro, visibly distressed. Life here is rather complicated, and the old walls bless us with numerous mysteries. One of those is unending sleeplessness, an affliction that drove her mad. What do you do as the town steward? It's not anything fascinating, really. I just help with all sorts of practical affairs that help keep the wound running, tracking inventory, coordinating supply runs, determining our resource deficiencies, logging births and deaths, organizing events, that sort of busy work. It's not intellectually demanding work, but I'm happy to do it. Who is in charge here? Unfortunately, that's a matter of debate at the moment. For a while, two men in particular led the settlement. Tredcaster Walkstaff, who has been here the longest, and Forgebound Master Jaspos. They made it possible to survive here, but really see things eye to eye. Were the conditions here not so fragile, I'm certain they would have come to blows ages ago. Wait a second, Tidecaster Wagstaff? Is that what you said? Yes, I... The sage pauses to give Eb a head to look and nods with a knowing smile. I believe Wokstaff will be the most amused to see another Tidecaster. He's been here as long as any. Most of the folk here credit him with making this whole place possible. Oh, I'm sure this will be amusing. There's another Tidecaster alive. He does seem largely disinterested. Of course, because all his Tidecasters sleep together in a big clamshell made of solid moonlight. Look, I'm glad Wagstaff is alive and well. I'm just curious why this fucking coward didn't join us in our battle against Kairos. I'm curious to hear what he's been doing that made it impossible for him to join the rest of us in battle. I'm just angry that I can't play my last Tidecaster ever argument as to why I'm amazing and you should value my life over the lives of your inferior followers. It's fine. I'll adapt. There was also a beast woman, Reef Talon. Really quite a remarkable creature, actually. She held this place together and, I, and kept tempers at bay until fairly recently. She was a worthy leader, as we've seen in the wound, but she's no longer with us. So the bickering between Jespus and Wokstaff continues. Hmm. What happened to real Reef Talon? Reef Talon was a bulwark against not only the bane, but death itself. She had a mystic gift, or so we thought. Her touch brought everyone, the wounded, the sick, the dying, back from the edge, but it changed them. The curse wasn't noticeable at first, but seemingly without fail, those healed would slowly but surely stop sleeping. A minor melody at first, but a cumulative one. As days and weeks go on, they lose themselves. Depression, malaise, paranoia, an ending into itself. My master Lexim was treated by Riftalon, and in her case, she lost her ability to work magic. Between this and some disputes about whether it's proper for a beast woman to eat humans resulted in a Riftalon leaving the wound, disappearing into the depths of the old walls. Many of the sleepers followed. The sleepless that left haven't returned, so it's hard to be optimistic about any of this. Hmm, that's an unusual power. Can't say I've ever heard of a beast or a mystic that does such things. I regret not being a better student of beast man magics, but I concur. This is most unusual. What stranger still reefed out and did not boast about being a mystic, and beasts are nothing even boastful. I have a hypothesis. Perhaps she slew so many bane, their sickly powers have soaked in her very touch. He shrugs, letting out a long sigh. But it's just speculation. All I know for sure is scopes of li lives were inadvertently ruined by her healing gift. And folks here have some complicated feelings toward Riftalon. 
He pauses in thought, nervously rolling a quill between his fingers. None have recovered, unfortunately. The end result appears to be inevitable. Still, I can't help but wonder if Riftal could have corrected this. It's a shame. You should know, Fatebinder, that there are a small number of people that have been treated by Riftal but haven't fully lost their grip on things. He has post apprentice, Aisley, for one. It is though just a matter of time until the worst guess sets in. Oh, tell me about the Aspos. Look for the broad-shouldered man with the booming voice. He's almost always taking out his frustration on some poor rock or boulder just there by his forge. He points northwest towards a plum of smoke rising above the surrounding walls. Jaspos and his two apprentices arrived some time after Walkstaff. I think we worried he'd be a true loyalist and the man we surrendered to Kairos, but he's taken a shine to this place and is trying to create his own the corner of Teratus. I think he likes the seclusion being surrounded by a variety of rock types. He builds most of the bridges you see here, some cisterns to fill the water. He's a one-man war crew, and he knows it, unfortunately. He has more than a few supporters, particularly since he created those purifying aquifers. The water here causes illness, and without his help, most of us wouldn't have enough clean water to drink. I would like to know more about Wokstaff. He chuckles, his lips pressed together in a slight, knowing smile. Prickly old fellow, Wokstaff. One of the last tidecaster in the tears, I believe. His eyes widen in solemnization. His kind were his enemies to Kairos, true, but I'm certain he has no personal designs against the Overlord, Fatebinder. Had you told me another caster is looking in the tears, Wokstaff wouldn't have been my first guess. But I'm not wholly surprised either. He insisted the Exodus was a foolish, cowardly plan. At least he's sticking to his convictions on this matter. Uh, he's not one for pleasantries or charisma of any sort, but he is a master of his craft. He was the first to treat the toxic waters in these old walls, and today it's the only cure that works. The wound would be in bad shape without him. Give him some time and you might see beyond his craft exterior. Just know that he prefers the solitude of his pool, so don't head over there unless you're willing to suffer his glare. Hmm. A beast woman was in charge. That's a bit unusual. Uh, indeed, but Reef Talon is m a most unusual beast. She's a lot more focused, patient, and sensible than all the other beasts I've seen and I've ever encountered. Anyway, Reef Talon was able to organize beasts and humans into effective patrols against the Bane. With her in charge of defense, casualties dropped. No Bane ever slipped into the common area, and disputes between beasts all oh, but disappeared. At a certain point, it seemed foolish not to have her in charge. We've had a few beastmen wander into a refuge, and I don't know how or why, but life here changes them. I don't know if it's the pain, something in the water, something about the magics of this place. After a span or two living with us, most beastmen just seem to become a bit more civilized, relaxed. Maybe speak to some of our basemen, perhaps you'll agree. Okay, thank you for your knowledge. Ah, very well, Fade by that. If you haven't done so yet, please speak with Jaspos or Wokstaff. The wound doesn't speak with a single voice, but these two come the closest to such a thing. And we'll level up. We can't level up uh, wits anymore. So I will go into accuracy. I'm not using magics a lot. Move faster in combat. I think it could be useful. Okay, I'm going to additional spell slot. Maybe I should get some more magic. I like this one. I just really like the bow talents. Okay, but this is where I'm gonna end this part here. So for now, thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon. Bye.